Hello, so I was cut off whenever I was trying to uh, finish up these three last vocabulary words for this section. So let's talk a little bit about the infancy gospels. And the infancy gospels, um, if you could try to break it down this way, uh, what what do, is an infant? An infant um, is a child. Uh, what is a gospel? A gospel is um, shown as a depiction of the good news, that's what gospel means, is good news, of Christ. So if we put those together into infancy gospels, we can assume that it means something about infant Jesus or infant Christ. And you're right. Um, an infancy gospel um, is a biblical book whoops, that focuses upon Jesus um, as a child. Um, so if you just think of an infancy gospel, think of a gospel. There are many of them written, especially Gnostic gospels, but a lot of people didn't really um, like them. Necessarily, they're kind of controversial in that we don't really know much about Jesus whenever he was a child. We don't know much about um, how his powers kind of originated whenever he was young. So um, they're not really part of our canon anymore. But in history, many of them have been found. And they refer to Jesus um, as a young child from the time he was born up until um, he's 5, 6, 7, 12 years old. So Jesus growing up. So what is this infancy gospel of Thomas? Um, the infancy gospel of Thomas um, is a controversial, um, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, uh, infancy gospel about Jesus. Um, why is it controversial? Um, because it shows Jesus um, being a mischievous child. And whenever we say mischievous, um, think of Jesus between the ages of 5 to 12 years old in this particular gospel. Um, he's using his powers to play pranks on people. Uh, sometimes he gets carried away with his anger. Um, and he uses his power for... Um, for not so good things. Um, he uses his power, um, I don't want to say for evil because it's not for evil, but I'll just put he misuses his power. So you get Jesus as a young child between the ages of, think of as, you know, being five years old. If you think to the time when you were five or if you have a younger sibling or someone you babysit, uh, you can kind of understand that, um, you know, at that point, little, younger children normally can't make very good um, decision-making skills. You know, um, they may have temper tantrums. They may just get upset. It's because they're not, um, their brains aren't fully developed yet. Um, you know, they can't always reason out their emotions or how they feel. And so you get this um, flaw almost of Jesus where um, it's really interesting because there's one account where he gets really upset with a little boy who's about his age, and he ends up cursing the little boy and he kills him. You know, it's like he's using his powers in a way that he doesn't know how to control his powers. He's just a little kid trying to have fun or getting upset, and um, his powers kind of go haywire sometimes. Um, but this gospel um, does show him trying to learn how to use his powers, whoops, um, how to use his powers for good, like to help his dad with um, carpentry work. Um, he ends up bringing that little boy that he kills back from the dead. Um, so you see him kind of growing throughout that gospel, and you see him learning how to use his powers. But at the start, you can imagine it's controversial, because you get this young figure of Christ who um, almost doesn't really know how to use his powers, um, and sometimes even misuses them. Because he's so young, and it's like, it's like he's a normal five-year-old, but doesn't um, know how potentially dangerous or powerful that he is. So that's where you get that viewpoint about Jesus. And again, that's one of the um, oldest infancy gospels about Jesus. And it's a very um, controversial one.
Okay, so let's talk about the difference of Mark and John. Uh, when does Jesus die in relation to the Passover? Um, in Mark, Jesus dies um, on the day after the Passover meal. Uh, you can see Jesus having an account of having his last supper, which would be Passover. Last supper meal with the disciples. And so um, in Mark, it is after he has that last supper, after he eats with the disciples, that he is um, taken into custody uh, by the authorities and he is crucified um, on the day after that Passover meal. However, in John... Oops. Uh, Jesus is killed before the Passover meal. In fact, Jesus is killed on the day of the preparation of Passover. Uh, now, what, what would be prepared for Passover? What is this day of preparation? Um, on this day, traditionally, um, a sheep would be um, picked out, whoops, picked out and killed um, as a symbol of sacrifice, um, you know, as a symbol of, um, I don't know how much you all know about this, but I'll go into it just a smidge. Um, in Moses' time, um, there was a plague, and this plague um, was supposed to come upon the people of Egypt because Pharaoh kept refusing to let the um, Egyptian Pharaoh kept refusing to let the Egyptian people free the Israelites. So the Hebrew people were still under the captivity of the Egyptians. Pharaoh refused to let them go. So um, what God told Moses is that I will bring the angel of death upon um, the Egyptian people and upon anyone who doesn't slaughter a lamb and put its blood over the doorpost. So at this time, um, the Hebrew people all took a lamb, um, just a, sim a simple, you know, pure white lamb, and killed it and put its blood um, over the top of their door. And so according to legend, um, this angel of death supposedly um, saw that blood and did not go into any of the Hebrew people's house. And so it passed over them. So... Uh, the angel of death from Moses' legend um, passed over the Hebrew people. Um, this an this um, angel of death, however, um, the Egyptians did not slaughter any lambs or anything. So it went and it killed the firstborn of um, all their families, the firstborn children. And you can imagine what a, a huge problem that was. You know, pretty much everyone knew someone who was affected by this. Because if it's a firstborn child, pretty much every family will have one of those. And so that just completely uh, stunned the Egyptian people. Um, and that was kind of the final straw for Pharaoh. And Pharaoh ended up letting the Hebrew people go because of this angel of death. Um, he just said, this is too much. This has been such a tragedy. Um Keeping the Hebrew people as slaves is just not worth it. So anyway, now you know a little bit of background about the Passover. The Passover is um, a festival that the Hebrew people still celebrate today in which they are um, paying homage to this legend of Moses and the angel of death and the angel of death um, passing over the Hebrew people um, because of the sacrificial lamb. And so on this day of Passover... At this time, in Jesus' time even, what would have been done is a lamb would have been slaughtered and it would have been um, eaten. And that was just the tradition. So in John, whoops, uh, you have Jesus being killed as, as you remember before, we were talking about a symbol or a moral truth. Um, as a sacrificial lamb for the sins of the world. So Jesus is being set up um, as the sacrifice. He's offering himself as a sacrifice for the sins of the world um, to bring everyone justice on this day um, of the preparation of Passover. So there's that one day difference, but you can see this one day difference makes a big difference in terms of symbolism. 
So there you go.